Go and take a deep breath because we're going to yes. talk about scientific investigations now. Okay, maybe we should go a little bit slower with so this. That, yes. That's why I was hurrying you along because now <laughs> we've got enough time to talk about the investigations because this is so important. So hold onto your seat and work with us. And I see you've given them the slide where you say it's important that you should know and must know the differences between how you go about to plan an investigation. So what are those steps that you have to follow and what precautionary measures should you take when you perform an investigation? So when you plan an investigation, what is it that you will need? So your planning involves that. So even if you name everything within that first bullet, you will get one mark because it is about your apparatus, the things that you will need. And then also, if you need permission, you will have to ask permission. You will must decide what, where are we going to do it? Where are we going to do? What are we going to need when we do it? And then you decide on a method. The method are those procedures that you will have to follow. How are we going to perform this investigation? And then how am I going to collect the data and then recording it. What am I going to use to record my data? Am I going to use tables? Am I going to use notebooks? And um, etc. Mm. So this is very important. This, this is important because it quite often happens that you get a question and you are asked to give planning steps and then you talk about things that might go wrong that you have to look at. That's not what it is. Planning is people when you want to go out with somebody. You plan what you're going to wear, you plan what you're going to do, you plan how you're going to get money. That is what it is. When you want to go on a picnic, you plan what you pack in to eat, what you pack in to drink. Do you need a blanket to sit on? Where are you going to go? What time are you going to leave? It's the same here. When planning, what do you need so that you can do the investigation? So don't be bowled over by a question like that. Just sit quietly and think, I'm planning, what do I need? And I think what is also important, Lorraine, is mm. that they read the question relating mm. to this mm. investigation. Because I think it's a year or two ago, they had the one where they had blood samples taken. Yeah. And learners thought that they were going to withdraw blood and it was only a prick on the finger, which means it was only a sample taken. Mm. And so your planning would differ mm. if, if you only do something yeah, like that. It wasn't yeah. blood donation, it was simply blood testing. Yeah. And something, it, it depends on the question. Sometimes you might need permission from parents, you might need permission from the school. If you come from outside a school, if they say you want to go to school and do an investigation, you have to get permission from the Department of Education, from the principal, from the parents. Um, you have to make sure that things are confidentially handled. You have to get your books that you're going to write in. You have to decide how you are going to do it. All of these are planning methods. But then we get to the next one, the precautions. Now, precautions are things that we do to make sure that your investigation stays on track. In other words, what can you do that will not harm your test subjects? We talked about the fish earlier with a mm -hmm. mark and recapture method. How are you going to make sure that the fish don't get harmed? In other words, the mark that you make that it won't harm them, etc. Um, make sure that your study is ethical. Make sure that the results that you record are accurate. What about safety measures? If you are going to pin to get a, a sample of blood, you have to get some sort of uh, um, what is the word that I'm looking the for? Lancets. Yeah, you yeah. have to get the lancets and, and you have to make sure that you can't get germs. And you must get gloves. Yeah. Because, it, you know, if you work with yeah. blood, what are yeah. those safety measures that you mm. have to take? Yeah. Especially when you, you when we work with blood. Yeah, that's what we uh, are working with when we talk about precautions. Mm. Okay, shall we continue? This is a big word, and they were asked last year to talk about the validity of an experiment. Yeah. And um, how do we explain validity? And how do you describe it within an investigation? So, 
I, I always th find it very easy when I say the word and the English learners have it easy because they can say validity refers to the v variables. You see the V, mm. the validity refer to the variables. How did I, or the factors, those variables, how did I control those variables? So it's those research methods that you've done and was it done with the appropriate care and diligence? Yeah, I think the next slide will show a good summary. Yeah. Um, you're asking for a summary, but there it is. All the con variables with validity, it's about those constant or fixed variables. And were you testing one variable at a time? In other words, um, when I want to test if sugar dissolves faster in cold water or in hot water, the only thing that I'm going to change is the temperature of my water and I'm going to take the time how fast it dissolves. The size of the container, the amount of sugar, the amount of mm. water, the place where I do it, the way I stir, those must be kept constant. Those are the fixed variables. And if I do it right, then my experiment is valid. So that refers to the validity of the experimental procedure. So it's about the fixed variables mm. that's important. So those are the two things that you have to keep in mind when we talk mm. about the validity, whether an, an investigation is valid. First of all, the controlled variables you have to keep mm. constant and then you only test one variable at mm. a time. Should they get a question about, let's say, experiments that were done in two positions or two different uh, um, types of experiments, and they ask you about the validity. Just look at the conditions in which it was done. Was it the same? Last year they had a question where they had to look at moths in different areas. And it wasn't valid simply because they didn't know about the number of trees in each area and okay. the size of the area. So just think a little bit about the background factors that must all stay the same so that you only test one factor at a time. Right. But there's another big word. And here we have again reliability. And as I've said, if it's validity, you say validity, variable, reliability, repeat. So how can we make it more reliable? Is to repeat the investigation. And if we get the same results several times, then we can say that this investigation is reliable. No, if, if, if you do the experiment and you explain it to me and I do the experiment and I get more or less the same results, then it is yeah. reliable. Or increase the sample size. Make your, yeah. your Take more of, of the sort and test it again and see if you get more or less the same results. Mm. And there we have it. So reliability, if we repeat it, will we get the same results? And if we increase the sample size, will we still get more or less the same results? That makes it mm. reliable. So remember, reliable, repeatable, validity, variables. That was a good one, you know. It was. It was a bright moment. 